A quick introduction to quantum systems, we're more than just a drone manufacturer, we're really an aerial intelligence company that provides a family of solutions to both the governmental and commercial industries. We have about 10 years of experience in drone technology, robotics, and imagery collection. Quantum Systems has a proven track record of building best-in-class UAV systems that provide survey-grade mapping data to operators and operations in multiple industries. Today, we're showcasing the workflow of our vertical takeoff and landing fixed-wing mapping system, the Trinity Pro. The Trinity platform offers compatibility with RGB, LiDAR, and multispectral cameras, and it has the capability of flying 90 minutes in ideal conditions. The system is remote ID ready and has an IP rating of 55. So there's no worry if you run into a light rain, snow, or fog during your long missions. Takeoff and landing wind speed capabilities sit just over 25 miles per hour at its hover stage. And the system is capable of transitioning at takeoff at about 160 feet and transitioning at landing at about 250 feet. The ideal cruise speed is about 38 miles per hour for optimal data acquisition. We're now gonna hop into Cubase. Cubase is our proprietary flight planning software, and we're gonna show you how to easily plan a large mapping mission and ensure accurate data quality and a safe flight. The Trinity Pro is completely autonomous, but I have complete control over the systems at all times, either with my Xbox controller RC that has assisted fixed wing flight capabilities or with easy to use buttons directly in Cubase on my laptop that I bring into the field. So let's hop into Cubase and start building a mission. So this is the home page of Cubase. This is where you're going to find some news about the latest and greatest uh, in Cubase and firmware updates. We'll also announce any kind of notifications that you need to be aware of about your Trinity Pro or Cubase as a whole. To start a mission, we're going to go into our missions tab. And you'll see here that I have a lot of different missions from all my different demonstrations and projects that I've been working out throughout the last year. Uh, they're all saved in Cubase, easily loadable. So if I'm going back to a site multiple times, I can load that mission uh, quickly and easily. I have the ability of saving a mission onto my computer and also loading it uh, directly from my finder in my computer. Today, we're going to create a, a new mission from scratch and show you the workflow. We're going to be using a test flight that Drone Nerds has provided here in Miami, Florida. So first things first, on the left hand side here, I'm going to click new mission and you'll see a base map that I specify uh, pull up automatically. I have lots of different options for base maps and I can also download my base map so that I do not have to have Wi-Fi in the field. But today, we're just gonna be working with world imagery with labels. And I'll click select, and that base map will load in. To easily pan to where your mission is going to be, uh, I can input the address. So today, we're doing a mission in Ivers Estate Park in Miami, Florida. And you can see that I typed that address into my search bar, and it brought me directly to where my mission is going to be. On the left hand side, you're going to see some options for mission settings, adding new elements, and this is where I'm really going to be building my mission uh, during the planning phase. The top portion of my screen here is my, my toolbar, primarily used for uh, monitoring the system during setup and during the flight. I'm first going to click mission settings here and you'll see a box open where I can choose my aircraft as well as the specific payload that I'm going to be using in this specific mission. I have some safety parameters to set up here. This link loss tolerance means that the drone will keep flying if I lose connection with my radio transceiver for 30 seconds before it triggers a loiter procedure. My second option is a link loss loiter time and this is the amount of time that it will loiter in that specified link loss point um, until it returns the system to home uh, to trigger an automatic landing procedure. I can also specify a maximum takeoff altitude. At a default, it is at 500 feet. Today, we're going to be planning a mission with the RX-1, but you can see here that I can quickly choose the specific payload that I would like to plan the mission for. Once everything is specified to my liking, I'll click close. 
And here I can begin adding new elements to the mission. I'll click add new element and you'll see a box open uh, with some choices for takeoff and landing, remote landing, specifying your area, creating a corridor mission, uh, creating a path, as well as a LIDAR calibration, a working zone, and a no-fly zone, as well as a safe return path. I'll first specify where my takeoff and landing point is going to be. And in this mission, I know that we're gonna be right on the corner of this road here. So I'll click takeoff and landing and place it on the corner of this road right next to this uh, table that I can see in the imagery here. Once I click down, you'll see a little home icon as well as a checkered flag and a transition cone highlighted in green. On the right hand side, you'll see takeoff and landing settings. In this box, I'll be able to manipulate uh, specific parameters uh, for my takeoff and landing. The transition altitude above takeoff is the point that the drone will transition from its hover phase into its fixed wing flight. For this specific area, I know that there's no large trees, buildings, wires, or anything that's going to obstruct my path. So I'll specify this transition altitude to be 75 feet but you can see that I have a minimum of 26.25 feet and a maximum of 196.85 feet. It's important to note that with the Trinity platform, a lot of your battery consumption is going to be taken up at the hover stages. So if you can keep this minimal, then you will save a lot on battery life. Once I'm happy with that number, I'll click apply and I'll work down my parameters here on the right. The next is the direction of the transition. With a fixed wing system, we wanna be transitioning into the wind as much as possible. And if you're connected to Wi-Fi, we have this button on the left-hand side of your screen that you can see the direction of the wind at that specific time. I can also manually import this wind direction if you know that it's going to be different on the day of your flight. In this scenario, we can see that the wind is coming from the southeast, with that, I want my transition cone, that highlighted green, to really be pointing into the direction of the wind. So I'm going to increase my angle a little bit here so that it points into the direction of that wind. I can then narrow or extend that transition cone, allowing the system to choose the most optimal angle into the wind. I can narrow it down if I'm in tighter conditions, or if you're in a situation where every direction is a possibility of flying into, I could extend that to 360 degrees. For this example, we're gonna keep the angle at about 100 degrees into the direction of the wind that's specified uh, in today's conditions as coming from the southeast. Below the takeoff, you'll see I have some retransition parameters and I'll specify my retransition altitude above takeoff. This parameter will specify the height that I want my system to transition at the end of its flight to hover back to its home point. For this example, we're going to also keep that at 75 feet, but as you can see, we have a minimum of just under 50 feet and a maximum of just over 262 feet. I'll then click apply. And just like the takeoff, I do want to be transitioning into the wind as much as possible so I can deviate the direction that the drone will take to go into its landing procedure with the direction degree here. You'll see that I have a little radio icon here, and this is the point that if my drone does lose communication with the radio transceiver, this is the home point that it will come to after the specified time and loiter until I either regain communication or if I don't, it will loiter and trigger a return to home feature after the time that I specified in those mission settings. With the Trinity Pro, I have two options of a descent pattern. I either have linear or circle, here right now, you can see a linear approach, but if I switch that to circular, you'll see that it will loiter right around the home point and transition very close to that home point uh, into its hover stage back onto the ground. For today's mission, we're gonna keep it on linear. And once I'm happy with all of these parameters, I'll click finish element. After that, I can go back to add new element and then click area 
where I can begin to draw my area of interest that I would like to map. I can make this as simplistic as I'd like, a nice easy square, or if your area isn't a perfect square, I have the capability of making it a complex polygon. Once my area is specified, I can go into my area settings and determine my ground sampling distance or the corresponding altitude. For today's mission, we're gonna stay at 250 feet, which allows me to acquire a ground sampling distance with the RX-1 at 0.39 inches per pixel. I can then manipulate my overlap if I would like, and in the show advanced option, I can deviate the leg directions, and in a fixed wing flight, we would like to have a crosswind as much as possible so that we have a constant cruise speed. Today's conditions are coming out of the south, so we do want to have our transects going from east to west or west to east. I then have some options below to flip my legs, invert my legs, or optimize my leg sequence. For today's mission, we'll keep it very simple and uncheck all of these. Below that, you'll see some options uh, for terrain following uh, with different parameters. Because today is a very flat scenario, we're going to do an above max leg altitude. If I was in a very complex terrain situation, I would want to do advanced terrain following. And if I do click that option, you'll see these numbers uh, in my area. These are my waypoints. The more waypoints, the more times the drone will deviate its altitude in response to the terrain below. This advanced terrain following allows you to have a standardized ground sampling distance throughout the area of interest. But as I said, today we're gonna keep it as above average leg altitude. It's important to note that there is a max waypoint of 300 in Cubase. You will not be able to upload a mission to the drone if there is more than 300 waypoints in your mission. Once I'm happy with those parameters, I'll click finish element. I then can create a working zone. This working zone will create a geofence. If your drone hits this barrier, it will automatically trigger a return to home feature. You will not lose process of your mission and you can always return to the last transect and image that you took. In this test area, I do know that I have a tall cell phone tower just to the south of my home uh, point and I can specify a no-fly zone and draw a polygon around that structure. It is important to note that this no-fly zone does not trigger any kind of return to home feature, and the drone will not know to automatically not go into that space. This is purely a visual aspect in Cubase that allows your operator to know that this is a place you do not want to fly. Some other options I do have in Cubase is I can create a path. This is a path that you could specify the drone to take before or after a mission where it would not acquire any imagery while flying. If I wanted, I could also have multiple areas of interest by clicking another polygon. But for today, we're gonna keep this mission very simple with just one area of interest. So there we have it. We've created a small mission for the Trinity Pro and the RX-1. You can see on the bottom left here, I have a total flight time of about 24 minutes and 36 seconds, an acreage of about just over 40. And this is going to take about 22% of my battery. Once I'm done with the mission, I'll click these three lines on the top left that will bring me back uh, into my home pages of, of Cubase and I will choose save mission and then I can name the mission for later use or sharing purposes. You'll then see once I save that my mission will pop up into my recent missions and I can quickly load that mission for later use in the field. Quickly I'd like to show you how to download base imagery. On the bottom left of my screen I'll click these three little dots it will open up some options, and my middle option is a general map actions, and I'll go to export, and you'll see a green square pop up on my screen, where I then can create a map name, specify how zoomed in I'd like that imagery to be, and download that imagery for later use when I don't have Wi-Fi in the field. I can also import my own KML files, 
create areas of interest and mapping mission directly from that KML, or I can import my own digital elevation model at a more accurate resolution than what is available with the satellite data that is already in Cubase. And that's how you quickly create a large scale mapping mission with the Trinity Pro in Cubase. We're gonna go hop in the field, put this drone together and put this bird in the sky so we can acquire this data.